Okay, so if you recall what we did last time, what was the last five minutes that we spent on? I think we were discussing the solution methods. Uh, solution methods for and then I told you that you please read two solution methods. One is Pagano, th second one is uh, Srinivas. Uh, I gave you reference. They are already load and uh, they are already uploaded on uh, uh, Moodle, I think, uh, both the papers. So, they are they have solved very complex problem of layered composite. Okay, I, I intend I mean I expect that you solve only an isotropic plate, homogeneous, homogeneous isotropic simplest material. So, but the method should be the one which they have used. Okay, so it will it will turn out to be very simple, but you try to understand the method and uh, uh, and go through the complete exercise of finding out uh, displacement and stresses in the plate. Then there are other methods, other methods means there are many methods, uh, uh, there is one, one such method which we have also developed and that has turned out to be very good, very successful uh, and uh, we have we have applied it to problems in mechanics, not necessarily solid mechanics. We have applied also in fluid mechanics, thermal problems, heat transfer, everywhere, wherever you have three dimensional problem or two dimensional problem, how to solve it uh, that is by reduction, how to solve it by reducing the dimension. That means, assume solution in, in at least if it is a three dimension, so assume solution in two dimensions, two directions, assume solution which satisfies the boundary condition. See the sin cosine that we have used for U V W boundary condition, they satisfy the boundary conditions that is the requirement at x equal to 0, x equal to a, y equal to 0, y equal to b boundary conditions, whatever boundary condition that u equal to. Uh, I mean x equal to 0, u not equal to 0, v, v equal to 0, then w equal to 0, sigma x equal to 0. These conditions will be satisfied by the whatever you have assumed. You cannot take any solution, not that you just take a curve and say yes it satisfies. No, you have to take a curve which satisfies the boundary condition in that direction then that one you are substituting in the differential equation, then you will get something. So, basically it uh, you always uh, the 3D problem. So, this is basically you have if you have a 3D problem, so you assume solution in two directions satisfying boundary conditions. Then substitute substitute this solution, this assumed solution in the governing differential equation. Then you will get you will obtain you will obtain an ordinary differential equation system, because partial will you will obtain a this system. Then of course, this has to be solved 
in the third direction because two directions you have already assumed. So, this O D will have to be solved in the third direction O D is easier to solve, but then there are number of methods that have developed around this. So, Pagano has developed one method how to solve this, uh, Srinivas has also developed how to solve this and then I will also give you the glimpse of what we have done and then that will and then there is. Uh, so, what is our method? And I, I think I gave you a reference that you please last time I gave you now. How many people have at least seen that paper? You have seen? Mm -hmm. okay. So, our method is like this. So, best way to explain this will be with reference to a problem. How do we so I will now since I have already covered both three dimensional problems as well as, as well as two dimensional problem. I have given you both plane stress, plane strain, complete formulation, 3D also. So now so I will just for simplicity I will take a plane stress problem because there instead of assuming solution in two directions, I will assume solution in one direction. So, let me take a plane stress this is just as a representative solution how to develop the method of solution is plane stress. Hmm. So, what happens in plane stress? Plane stress one of the one of the dimensions of the geometrical see there are three dimensions. So, in a plane stress one of the directions uh, we will assume that the thickness and denote it by z. So, z is very thin this is thin. And then there are two conditions one is z is thin and then loads are confined in x y plane only. Then only plane stress straight will occur these are the two conditions. There are two conditions one is this other is this under two conditions plane stress condition will exist. So, if this is so, so on a z equal to on a z plane. So, since z is small, so on a z equal to a constant if you take z equal to constant means z plane any z plane outward normally z normal to the plane is z z plane you understand z plane everybody z plane means outward any plane is defined by its outward normal not inward normal outward to the. So, if it is in z direction and then uh, so on a z plane what are the stresses that exist that stress is z x then z y and tau z z which we also call sigma z. These are the three stresses that exist. Now, since it is thin no load is applied in the direction z everything is confined to only x y plane. So, these stresses will all be 0. So, non zero stress components are 
are only tau x x tau y y and tau x y only 3. So, I will just go through what are the basic. So, in a plane stress we know first set equilibrium equations. equilibrium equations instead of drawing a three dimensional element a parallel pipette here you need to draw only a a small element around a point p in fact not around a point p but p and q because you have to take here variation of stress from left to right from this plane you are moving to this x plus delta x from y you are moving to y plus delta y. So, it is a finite finite dimension element z is very small. So, I will not show it z is thin mm? it is a thin sheet. So, this is this is an element and then this is in a state of equilibrium. So, you will have to draw this. So, what is it? What will be here? Uh, this one will be sigma x plus delta sigma x. There will be some change, a small element. Similarly, this will be tau x y plus del tau x y and similarly in y direction this will be sigma y plus delta sigma y and this one will be tau y x plus delta tau y x. This is this element is in a state of equilibrium. So, if you what will be deltas? All delta will be delta, for example, delta sigma x will be what? Delta sigma x will be change rate of change of this. So, del rate of change of this with respect to x or y sigma x, I am talking of this x. So, with respect to x multiplied by delta x. So, like this like all the de all the deltas will be like this this is only the first term we are retaining this is the simplest approximation first you know otherwise you will have to retain also the higher order delta x square delta x cube. So, we are retaining only first order term. So, this is the simplest approximation delta x can be written as this similarly other similarly tau delta tau x y like this. So, finally, when you do this equilibrium sum all the forces in x direction on y direction. So, you will get this equation. I do not want to say how will you get it because we have done it so many times. So, this one will be So, this is your equilibrium equations then for that is all there are only. So, this problem is 
hundred times you have to say that elast this is also a exact problem we are not physics of the problem is such that it is thin body is thin so this is my equilibrium equation which we have derived sorry there are three three unknowns three unknowns what are three unknowns sigma x sigma y tau x y and two equations so there is one static indeterminacy so that is why you have to study deformation so deformation means study of deformation so and in this you will have this So, we have got three equations strain displacement in how many unknowns? Hmm? Three strains and plus uh, two displacement, five. There are everything is new, see, we do not know anything. So, everything, so five, it involves five unknowns, we can say, because strain also is unknown, displacement also is unknown, stress also is unknown. So, so, so far. 6 plus 2, not 6 by 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, 8, 8 unknowns are there so far, 3 stresses, 3 strains and 2 displacement, 8 unknowns are there and we have got only 5 equations, how many, huh? 5, 3 plus 2, 5 equations. So, still we are short, so the, the, there where we get constitutive, you must, must study constitutive or material law. Huh? body forces are here no 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 body forces are always known body forces here it will be known quantity now body means density uh, weight uh, per square meter because this is in plane so we will we'll specify how many how many kilogram per 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 meter square or something you know so this is depending upon body forces So, what are the constitutive relations here? Huh. Hooke's law, now I will not go through Hooke's law, mm, yes, what is this? Simple, I, let me take simple, so that I can, I can solve the problem. Mm. For isotropic, no temperature change, no temperature change, hmm? this is ok, but I have always told you that this form is not useful in our working computation when when we start the other form is a stress in terms of so stress if you find out the stress this will turn out to be e divided by 1 minus nu square into epsilon x plus nu epsilon y this ko jara check kar lijiye i think it two equations in two unknowns Huh? You can solve this sigma x, anyway sigma y
So, this is the inverse relation which is more useful, this one is more useful. I, I tell this 100 times, this one is from first principle this can be derived, but this cannot be derived from first principle physics. Hmm. So, now we have got enough equations and enough unknowns, so this is called formulation. The, the good thing about our method is that we have to start from fundamental, any problem you take you always have to start from fundamental. Fundamental means the basic equations which govern the behavior as it is. So, then sets 1, 2 and 3 constitute complete two D plane stress governing equations unknowns again I will write, so that it enters into your head unknowns and equations. Equilibrium there are two equations, so two equilibrium equations and then type I mean what are the equations. So, we have got equilibrium two equations three unknown then uh, strain uh, uh, displacement i study of deformation we have got 3 3 that means strain displacement number of equations are 3 and but unknowns are total 5 then we have got constitutive or which is called stress strain relation we have got three equations involving three stresses and three strains and three stresses are already coming here, three strains are coming here also, five includes three and so, so 0. So, now it is 8 here and this is also 8. So, this is completely defines the problem. So, this, this defines the, this defines the problem. Two D problem subject to only boundary conditions. Boundary conditions on x equal to zero and a and y equal to zero and b. R equal also. It is not necessarily always zero it can be also x 1 and x 2, any it can be any y 1 and y 2, it is not that we have to start always origin. So, this is now, now we start thinking about, so our method is we will call this method has a history and uh, in this institute only i know the myth, i i know this method <laughs> many many institute i must because only only see you know a method if you have worked if you have not worked with uh, the method then you will not know somebody will be good in something else So, the method is n 
numerical integration. It is not analytical in not that it is it is semi the method is I will just say method is semi analytical I will not say analytical method is semi some people call semi semi analytical. Why it is semi analytical because in problem is two dimension uh, I have to reduce one dimension if it is a plane is stress so I have to reduce one dimension somehow. So, I will assume some solution analytically so that is analytical so that is analytical so so it is analytical in one dire analytical in one dimension and numerical in one dimension. So, it consists of one one direction we do analytical analysis in other direction we do numerical numerical how many people have done numerical how to solve d y by d x I think this I had shown you yesterday some function of this is the differential equation given to you x going from x is between x 1 and x 2 x going from x 1 to x 2 this differential equation is given to you slope slope of the function is given to you you have to find out find y slope is given. So, solution means find y subject to you have to have some condition subject to at x equal to x 1 in somewhere or it can be x 2 also x equal to x 1 y is given to be uh, call it it is good to call x naught this condition is given to you this curve that means this slopes that means I know the curve curve is something like this dy by dx dy by dx this is x and this is x and this is y but then this curve can be it can be moved parallel to itself it can also be moved here it can also be moved here it will have the same shape but then it can be moved in this plane xy plane which i do not want so i am saying you know at one point x equal to x 1 or x equal to x naught whatever you want to say x equal to at one point it is specified ki this yes no 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 this 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 your curve must be this is given y naught this distance then it is fixed. Now, you please find out what is this y. So, I am uh, we want to find out y y is a function of x. this is hmm? so how many people have done this by numerical integration what is the simplest method uh, start uh, 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 okay finite difference then what there is a chapter in any book on numerical analysis if you take any book you have done any course on numerical analysis I think first semester no? this is first semester you are doing also a course. So, any book on numerical analysis will give you also there will be a chapter numerical integration numerical integration of differential equation ordinary differential equation and there it is called Euler's method first is the simplest method is called Euler's method E U L E R Euler method this is the simplest method you have to develop see you know this why not. So, at a distance now here I let us say this is my d x 
this is my x 1 now. Whatever notation you use, there will always be problem. Huh? So, x 1 to x 1, x 1 to x 2. Okay. Huh? So, if I move d x forward, I want to find out this new. This is y naught, it is given, but then what is this? How to do this? So, what I will do? Yes, I can draw a slope here. I can draw a tangent, tangent, but tangent will cut this here. So, this is I can get this, this one, there is a difference between between this, there is a difference between this and this, which I have drawn. What is the difference? That is the actual value. This is the curve, curve is this, you know, defined by y. So, that point, but then if I draw a slope here, slope slope will not go to this point on the curve, it will be just below. So, this is now let me call this as y of x 1 and this as I am starting from 0 and this as y 1 and then I will write this, I will find out d y by d x at x equal to x naught, x equal to starting point x equal to x naught. Hmm? This is you have you are you are given it is equal to f x naught substitute the value f x naught y naught also is given to you. So, substitute you you know this. So, this is known slope is known this tangent slope is known. Huh? So, then I then I do I do this y 1 hmm, now, now like this this is y 0 and this is delta x x 0 x 1. So, this one this difference is how much y 1 minus y 0. This from here to here is y 1 this is a slope tangent. Hmm. So, then I will write slope slope at this point approximately this slope d y by d x at x equal to 0. Now, I will write approximate this is up to here it is exact y I am saying approximately is also can be written as y 1 minus y 0 divided by x 1 minus x 0. What is x 1 minus x 0 delta x? This is so delta x is x 1 minus x 0. A small delta I have taken. Why I have written here approximate? Is it okay or not? You know this, this is just the this divided by this is uh, this angle tangent of this, this divided by this. So, that is slope. Why I have written why it is like this? reason anybody quickly ah uh, ah uh. 
see here I have written x i because this is given to us. Now, I am writing the slope at the same point, I am writing this is approximate, it is not exact because uh, uh, why I mean this this one there is a difference between first of all you see the see the curve this curve is going like this from here curve is going like this you have drawn here a tangent so tangent is going so this is tangent curve is going like this so there is some this uh, that is error from here to here is error and actually this value is your y 1. So, exact value I am writing see that I am distinguishing between uh, this this value that is why I, I am writing this I am writing this from here to here is y at x 1 within see if I write like this when I write a fun, y a function of x 1 means it is exact value and when I just write y 1 means just like this means it is approximate. So, there is a difference between y x 1 is not equal to y 1 it is approximately equal to y 1 and y 1 minus y x 1 is the error term that you are committing at 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 what point error error at x 0 at the starting point sorry error at x 1 error at x 1. So, this is approximation and then more than this you should also go to the basic fundamental why it is like this. Basic fundamentals how do you define what is the definition of your derivative remember your 10th class or i don't know which class you are introduced nowadays uh, derivative 10th uh, class and 9th class Deriv you know differential calculus hmm? Hmm. definition of derivative derivative of function. Hmm. We always say that see d y by d x these are the changes change from going from one point to another if you take this is the distance and this is the change then is not equal to derivative we say you take limit of this as delta x tends to 0 then this is, is defined as dy by dx because when you have your curve like this, this is your slope here. If you take a point here p and here a point q, this is your chord, this is your tangent here, the tangent difference between Yes, we also do this.
but then I am, I am this is when we deal in numerical analysis then we show it like this, this is the curve this is, so this is y 2. Now, this is the chord, but slope is here slope at point 2 is this not this. So, the chord what you are finding out if you are taking y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1 represents it is an approximation for slope at x equal to x 1. Now, q you take here, now my card will come here. So, card is coming closer to the tangent. Q I take here, now my card is coming. So, finally, as this point comes closest to this, this line, this tangent line and this chord line will both meet and then only, then only it becomes slope. So, this is the basic definition of slope. So, whenever we take any finite, this is, this is you said finite difference, this is what we do in finite difference. You have two points here and then we just say, so, but then it is approximation. So, this is what we are doing there also. So, I was saying this, so this is uh, you have got, so this was just to discuss tell you what is the basic definition. So, from first fundamental this is, hmm. but here, so now we have got this, you have got this d y by d x 0 equal to slope equal to this and d y by d x equal to f. f x 0 y 0. So, therefore, I can write that y 1 minus y 0 is equal to x 1 minus x 0 multiplied by f x 0 y 0. This is approximately any numerical process is this is why it becomes approximate because your algorithm is not exact your formula that you have derived is not exact, there is approximation this we are doing a. So, no numerical process is exact, this is called finite difference, you are uh, taking points. So, now I have got one and therefore, I can say that y 1 can be approximated as y 0, I am taking this y 0 on this side plus f x 0 y 0 and this is I am calling delta x. By the way, this is called delta x is called step size, any numerical process requires step size. Step size has to be as small as possible. I mean you saw this here the basic definition, basic definition you saw uh, the step uh, here, this is the basic definition. You saw that delta x has to be, then only this derivative is possible this. So, it has to be chosen as small as possible, but then we are all human beings we cannot take equal to 0, it will always be some finite number. So, that is why error will always be there, but then this is now this is step size in numerical analysis is also denoted by another letter which is h. If you see in any numerical analysis book letter h will be there small h instead of delta x delta y h. So, I can call this as approximately. So, I have got a formula, 
now this is equal to sorry so i can say h times f x 0 y 0 just take the old value here this one this diagram is very necessary to explain this you take this value y 0 if you want to find out what is this how to get this point on the curve I cannot reach the curve, but I, I can go close to the curve I can find out y 1, y 1 I will find out and I can write like this and then y 1 can be found out from this y 0 is this y 0 plus h times the slope and slope is because you, you are given differential equation, you are, you are given this, this function is given to you this. So, this can be found out. So, this is only one, but now this is not, this does not end. So, I have now, I want this is my x, I divide, I start from x 0, I go to the next, I want to do it, I want to find out the values of y at many places along this path. This, this one is open by the way this is not closed, this is a closed, uh, it is not a closed domain, it is open, this is a initial value problem, by the way such problem is called initial value problem, you are given, you are, it is a first order differential equation, one condition, it the, this dimension, this domain x is open, you can go this, this dimension, this is open there is no limit, it is not like a boundary, it is not a boundary value problem that you are given in between this and this, between this and this, here this is open, you can go to any length and get the solution. So, I want my solution at number of points x, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 till this curve is going. So, you call this as x 1, x 2, I will cut it here x 3 and somewhere I will just write here this is x i and this is x i plus 1 and h we take same for simplicity this is my step size h. Step size we do not change although in theory it is not this need not be same, but in practice we always take equal to equal it is easier h. So, my interest is this. So, here this will be and this will be what will be the y here y i what will be y here i plus 1 what will be the exact value of y here uh, these are all approximate, when I am writing like this approximate, what is the exact value, exact value may be here, so that will, that could be, I will y x i plus 1, this is the kind of notation that we use to, to, to distinguish between, so y x i is exact value. And if I write simply y i approximate, so then now here, so I can get also this. Y i plus 1 minus y i divided by x i plus 1 minus x i delta x and this is this difference, difference here is this, this difference must be equal to the slope and that is equal to f, huh, what f? Huh? 
where are you finding out slope which point x i uh, uh, but will it be as you proceed will will function be exact it is exact only at the starting point because you know only x 0 y 0 everything is exact the moment you go to the next point y 1 becomes approximate. So, the moment you substitute x 1 x 1 is ok ordinate x 1 distance, but y 1 is approximate we do not know this we do not know this we know only this. So, therefore, this one f x i y i will always be approximate. this one f x i y function of x i if you can find out this will be true. This distinction must be this is simple this is elementary. Uh, so, this is so if you know this, but then since we know this only x x i and y i. So, okay. so, this one is known you substitute and whatever function is given you find out. So, now we can we can develop a general formula that y i plus 1 is equal to approximately equal to uh, by the way slope slope and then this slope becomes equal to approximate. So, this is equal to approximately is this sign see equal to is this exact approximate this. So, this one is exact this one is approximate. So, that one will be equal to x i plus h times f x i. Huh? y acha first one this one uh, this is y i hmm? hmm. so this is called a recurrence relation recurrence why it is recurrence this is a general formula for any point now I can go from any I can go from 0 0 to infinity it can go from 0 0 can be huh, 0 now can be accepted by your computer as a subscript yes in our time it was Fortran was not accepting, but new Fortran accept 0 also you can say do do you know do you do you know do you know do statement <laughs> in Fortran or any language huh, have you how many people know programming by the way just raise your hands you three programming programming some program how to write down how to add two numbers if i give if i give in uh, how to subtract how to add two matrices hmm? no 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 knows you can do that. Okay, so, this is recurrence relation and this is recurrence recurrence it is also called a stepping a step means I can vary from 0 go up to infinity. So, you are just using the same formula to go from uh, uh, from here to here from here to here, but a step by step a step by. So, it is a stepping it is a stepping is scheme is stepping this is your h first is the ground 0 this is the ground level and then you are going above the first floor by through steps. So, it is a stepping scheme a stepping. So, one of the uh, chapters or one of the topics in numerical analysis is developing stepping schemes stepping schemes 
schemes is in, a, in numerical analysis is called algorithm formula algorithm which can be programmed algorithm means this can be generalized now i can write a simple program to effect this computer will do the rest so algorithm a, a l g o r i t h m instead of a scheme you can write algorithm computer algorithm any procedure that is written for computer is called computer algorithm because hmm? so okay so idea is why we are doing this this this, this is all preliminaries but then why we are doing this is to so i told you that our intention is to develop a method for solving our two dimensional elasticity problem ha huh, by the way this method is called this method that you just now saw whatever i have described is the simplest method for solving any first order ordinary differential equation which is defined as a initial value problem and this was developed by euler and it is called euler's method basic oil e u l e r huh? 2308 so if you hear the name first is always euler's method then there are many other methods modified see this is the most rudimentary you can improve at every step you can improve the slope the this one that you are getting it can be improved so there is called something called improved eulers method or modified eulers method where we improve upon hmm so this is eulers method improved euler method will be in the same see we have done all this as a programming exercise improved euler method after getting the first one first after getting this first first time at every step let us say i equal to z, uh, i i going from 0 means 1 i got 1 so first we got i 1 approximately equal to y 0 plus h times f x 0 y 0 you got this y 1 hmm now y 1 we have got next time when you look substituting here x 1 and y 1 so you are finding out the slope approximately you are finding out slope approximately so now now then then modified eulers method is if these are the two points you have got this is at this is x1 and this is x2 so here slope and here slope now you have reached only this point so again you will be finding out and then you will be getting a slope something some other slope you will be getting actual slope is this but then you are getting this slope so then we said why not for every this for every segment this h there is a slope here there is a slope here why not i average the slope average so i find out this f x 0 y 0 plus f x 1 y1 y1 only because i know only y1 after getting y1 after after finding out y1 please substitute and then get get this divide this by 2 this is the average slope so this is f average so this is f f a average but where where it is it is at average means between this and this this average because neither it is this nor it is this 
it is some, but then average slope is always better than this slope and this slope. It will be closer to this because actual, you know, actual slope will be um, if if it was there an ordinate yes, it was like this. But then, so average will always be better. Is it okay? Average will always be better. So then average. So then then what we do? We also develop one more y1 modified or y1 improved y1 uh, you what dash shall we say I mean I am just notation I am forgetting you know what notation I should give huh? y1 improved y1 can be can be written as average slope h times f average and this y 1 this y 1 modified actually let me write down this is better than better approximation to y x 1 that is all I am saying this one will be better to this. So, at every step we try to modify, first we find out first, then we take the average of two slopes and then we find out a modified at every that means, now there will be two formulas at every step. For every step I will have two formula and I will because my interest is to find out this and uh, so this is better approximation to y 1. Okay, so, these are, but then there are many other, please read this chapter of any, take any book on numerical analysis and read this chapter. So, there will be Euler method, modified Euler, uh, Runge Kutta method, Runge Kutta. Second order. There are number of uh, types of Runge Kutta, they were Germans. So, Runge Kutta and they developed the and then the, the, one, the one which is very good is fourth order Runge Kutta and of course, the chapter will contain many, but then I think Runge Kutta you please read and Euler modified Euler and then fourth order Runge Kutta is the one which is very good it re reliable. Hmm? So, this one, so please read and uh, so this one is included in your course material. So, now coming back to our problem now, I have all the 8 equations. So, my interest is and one of the examples is the beam problem that we normally solve, a beam looks like this, it is a two dimensional body of length L and depth. Uh, now, this h and that h step size should not be confused, this is depth, hmm? depth of the beam and then it is supported. Now, supported means it is very, it cannot be just supported at one point and first let me draw the loading, some loading is there, but loading cannot be given unless there is, it is properly supported. Some p x is there function of load as a function of x. Now, I have boundary condition at x equal to 0, at x equal to 0, uh, 
and these are my Uh, it is like this width is very small see width is of the beam is very small it is a thin width direction we do not assume any variation of load. Hmm? So, every it is only a, a, a sheet a very very thin sheet. So, y direction is the width b. So, it is a very narrow if you see the cross section this is this is b and this is h. So, now uh, this is vertical direction is z. So, my displacement w is there. So, my boundary condition here is this is diaphragm supported see this edge is diaphragm supported this also is diaphragm supported. Diaphragm means I have very stiff in its own plane very flexible out of the plane. So, what does that mean that uh, sigma x at x equal to 0 and entire z is 0. Then w 0 z equal to 0 here again sigma x at L and w at L. And then the load is this some load is there. So, it is loaded I want to solve this problem. So, at any point my displacements are u and w. Like this function of x and z. What I do? It is a two dimensional problem. So, it is a 2 d problem. I reduce it to I assume based upon this based upon this I take that my loading as well as displacement displacement means my u u here what are the displacement u and w u is varying u which is a function of x sin z can be approximated by a function of what uh, cos hmm? cos yes pi x by l cos because here cos na cos will do u is allowed here and multiplied by what how does u vary in uh, u is varying hmm. huh? yes here it is a yes here some function of z function of z i i don't know i don't know how does it vary so i keep it i, I use it capital u n n i am using for a general huh? n is u n and it is a function of z u capital some u n function of z and then there will be summation here only one summation now need be there it is not a because there is only one dimension which has to be reduced. So, only here n going from 1 to infinity. 1 3 5. Similarly, w will be hmm. 
what will be w w sin into some function of this is unknown and n so it is the same approach there we had there because it was a we were reducing two dimension here we are reducing only one dimension so that was more you know they were double double summation hmm. so here and then general load also can be expressed any general load p as a function of x can be written as summation over m i uh, sorry n going from 1 to infinity p n multiplied by sin this I have explained load how a general load can be expressed like this any general load can be expressed like this. So, now it everything falls in line I have I have my displacement field expressed I have my uh, so this is this is okay this is how our approach goes but then the method that I am going to tell you is slightly different this is a displacement method this is this above is above waves the above uh, is a displacement method which we have already a displacement method and it will lead to simultaneous equation two equilibrium it will lead to it will lead to to two simultaneous tenuous equations in u z and and w z and derivative I am just written in general uh, u z and w z, but then our method is slightly different ours is a hmm, you have a class but then I have only given again only background uh, because it has taken more time to explain the history. So, uh, okay, just just let me close. So this is U W Z. Uh, I have given you something, uh, some assignment. On this, on this means not on this, but the three D. Three D I must have given. So okay, if you solve. 3 d at least you will know. So, this will be simpler this will be child's play. So, this is uh, our method that I am going to tell you is a mixed method. Uh, the approach is slightly different all these things will will be valid whatever I have done, but then slightly here now I have to think I have to think of numerical integration in z direction think of okay, I will reduce my dimension in this direction by assuming a solution in this direction sin cosine x direction. So, I will be left with z and then I will do 
numerical integration in z direction n i in z direction ok. So, tomorrow morning I will finish that numerical integration ok.